Good evening. I'm truly pleased to say a few words at the start of this event, an event which brings the Premio Napoli to New York to bestow its highest honor upon John Ashbery. This event has a special meaning for me personally, insofar as I have spent much of my life moving between Naples and New York, traveling along the 42nd parallel that spans the Atlantic and connects these two great cities. Many of you, I'm sure, have seen the invitation or the poster for this event, which precisely which shows that line across the Atlantic connecting uh, Naples and New York, this happy geographic uh, serendipity. Uh, in recent years, I've had the privilege to serve on the Premio Napoli jury. And it was there, in fact, two years ago, that we began to consider how the Premio Napoli might best honor John Ashbery with an award. Through the combined efforts of the Premio, the Calandra Institute, and the Italian Academy, I think we have found a wonderful way to do that tonight. I'd like to paint uh, a brief picture for you of, of where this jury meets and, and the kind of context. Uh, sometimes these, these juries and their awards seem a bit disembodied where they come from. Uh, it is the jury uh, meets in the Premio Napoli Foundation, uh, which is in Palazzo Reale, the wonderful uh, Bourbon uh, uh, royal palace uh, of Charles III. Uh, and it is in front of this, uh, this piazza, and many of, course, many of you, of course, have, have been there and, and seen this, but it's in front of Pla Piazza Plebiscito. So, so meeting uh, as a jury and, and the offices of the Premio as well, uh, one is very close to, to a lot of the rich history uh, that Naples, of course, possesses. Uh, to the right is San Carlo, uh, and indeed, as you walk into the uh, Premio Napoli Foundation, you're offering uh, sort of rubbing elbows with, with members of the, of the San Carlo Orchestra. Uh, you see sets being constructed, and uh, perhaps this is a, a taste of what uh, Walter Benjamin uh, noted in his great essay on Naples when he talked about the porousness of Naples, the way different environments interpenetrate. Uh, and that this was a very rich kind of Mediterranean experience compared to the northern, uh, northern houses uh, of his Germany where everything was carefully marked. Uh, and Benjamin reflected at one point that uh, even the sleep of the southerners and northerners is different because in Naples there is no real sleep as such. It's a kind of fluid state of, of, of sleeping and waking and it, you don't get your straight eight hours. In the north instead you can shut the door uh, get under the covers and enjoy that. So, so this, in a sense, uh, is, is something that you can feel uh, as you're in the Palazzo Reale. And then finally, you, you look to the, to the left, uh, I guess it would be the west, and you see the, the, the Golfo di Napoli, the, the, uh, you see Capri. And uh, let's just say that it's, uh, one could pick worse locations to serve as a jury member. <laughs> uh, so this is, is where the uh, Premio has its foundation, and Silvio will uh, say much more about the foundation, foundation, and so I won't get into that. Nevertheless, what is it this, that the foundation does? Uh, I'd like to say a few words about Silvio himself before uh, turning to that, and say something about his vision of Neapolitan culture uh, and the foundation more broadly. Uh, Silvio Perella was born in Palermo, uh, the other great southern city, uh, and lived there till the age of 11. He did some migration, as I understand, around uh, Italy, but finally arrived at the age of 16 in Naples. Silvio is a noted scholar and critic. Uh, he has uh, written important studies of Goffredo Parisi, uh, Calvino, and he is certainly also an expert of Raffaele La Capria, the, the Neapolitan writer. Silvio became the president of the Premio Napoli in 2007, and he saw some great potential in, in an organism that uh, he felt was not being uh, exploited to the fullest. Silvio saw the possibility to expand its, its scope, its activities, its, its cultural significance. And there are three areas that I find very fine about, uh, about what he is doing. The first is they have these popular juries, that there's the kind of uh, jury of experts, of, of writers and critics with, that I was a part of. Uh, and which award, uh, has chosen to award both to Charles Simich and to John Ashbery these awards. But there is a popular jury made up of uh, many, hundreds, thousands uh, of people, readers. And this is 
this is not elite. This is a very democratic uh, process and group. And I see it as a very powerful example of a kind of literary enfranchisement, that this brings readers into this process of, of literary deliberation in a way that I have seen in very few other places, and certainly not in the United States. Uh, secondly, uh, he has tried to take the prize out into the city and therefore has events in very different kinds of neighborhoods, some very popular quarters. And uh, it's also important to remember this, by the way, when one sees and hears about the horrific Camorra violence that does occur there. That, that, that does occur, it's true, but in those same quarters, you will have an evening of poetry reading. And it's, it's, it's hard to even imagine or think, but it, it happens. Uh, just to say it's a chiaroscuro reality and not to be uh, demonized as some horrific uh, sort of bed of, of criminality only. Finally, Silvio has seen ways to connect the premio and uh, Neapolitan culture more broadly to, to world literature, to uh, the international scene. And that is, uh, I think, a, a kind of ecumenical vision of, of, of Neapolitan culture that I, that I uh, admire. Uh, and one that certainly informs uh, what we are uh, here to do tonight in celebrating this prize. It's on this global note that I would like to conclude my remarks, and I would like to do so by reading a few verses from one of John Ashbery's poems, if I may. Uh, they are verses that capture the spirit of this prize for world literature, and they speak of Naples the city that bestows its highest literary honor upon one of our greatest poets tonight. It is the erratic path of time we trace on the globe with moist fingertip and surely the globe stops. We are pointing to England, to Africa, to Nigeria. And we shall visit these places, you and I, and other places, including heavenly Naples, queen of the sea, where I shall be king and you will be queen, and all the places around Naples. So the good old teacher is right to stop with his finger on Naples, gazing out into the mild December afternoon. <laughs>